Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab again. We've got a couple presents from HPE came in today. As you know, we've been working a lot on the micro server, and I guess you could say we're slowly sliding up the scale of, uh, of ProLiant goodness. We've got a DL160 Gen 10 in here out of the ProLiant series, and sitting over there, we'll get to in just a minute, we've got another box from them, a, a 2U server. So the, uh, the DL160 Gen 10 is part of their SMB series. So it's a 1U server that's going to appeal to uh, a more entry server need. It starts at around eight or $900. Of course, you can configure it and make it expensive if you so choose with Flash and all sorts of other things. But what HP has done with this family is tighten down the compatibility list on things like, there we go, uh, the CPUs available, the drive configurations, really trying to make it so that it's easy to consume for, what is this, a return information? I don't like the looks of that. So that it's easy to consume for small businesses, for small service providers that might need uh, something to deliver enough compute, but don't need as many of the resources as the larger DL360, not larger in size, but larger in scope of what it can do. So here we have it. We've got a rail kit. We've got cables over there and, and some other documentation that Kevin will surely not read. It's got this sort of Pac-Man foam that pinches on it, which is probably secure, but a little bit more trouble to deal with in getting it out. Go ahead and un unbag the rest of this and pull in a little closer to see what we've got. We've taken the plastic bag off, the tape, the little bit of cardboard that was left, and that nasty note about returning the unit and discarded all of that nonsense. Uh, so now we're taking a look at the front. This is clearly the eight small form factor option. It's populated with four drives, and we've got two more blanks and two more blanks over here. Uh, they do also make a four, three and a half inch drive backplane for this uh, for people that uh, want a little more hard drive capacity out of these units. Because they're targeted to the SMB, it's a, uh, a fine option. Just for fun, let's see what's in here. I know those labels say 10K SAS, which is fine, but we're always curious. Okay, we've got a 300 gig drive for boot. Another one, so we can do a boot pair. This is a 2.4 terabyte 10K drive and another 2.4 terabyte. So in this configuration, uh, you would generally use those two guys for boot and then use uh, the 2.4 terabyte drives for capacity. Uh, We're not so lucky to have the SSDs come inside this unit, but HPE does support a number of SSD options in their configurator should you choose to go that way. We've got the little ID card in the middle. What else do we have? Uh, ILO port, uh, another USB 3 port, uh, ID indicator, lights, and power button. So let me get rid of these, and we'll slide this around to the back to see how the rest of this is configured. All right, so flopping it around to the back, we can see that we have just a single power supply. That's a good indicator that we're only gonna have one CPU inside. 500 watt power supply, so the blank for where the other power supply would go. Uh, this looks like a blank riser here and support for two PCIe cards, a half height and full height. We've got onboard NICs, uh, management NIC, and uh, interface for USB for keyboard and uh, for VGA. So let's go ahead and slide the lid off of this and we'll see how this is configured on the inside. All right, so we're coming in tight on the lid. Let's go ahead and slide this guy off and get a look at what's inside. So as noted, this is going to be a little more Spartan of a configuration. That's okay for these purposes. You know, the point here is more to show the scalability of the HP ProLiant line. Again, coming off the micro server, physically this would be 
uh, a bit of a step up in terms of capabilities. And again, this thing starts at about eight or nine hundred dollars in their configurator. Uh, so, you know, we, we, you've got to temper expectations a little bit. So looking at the front, we've got uh, our current back plane with the drives that we just showed before uh, and the last uh, two down here. There are three fans. Uh, Presumably, if we had gone with uh, a two CPU configuration, the rest of these would be full. Uh, they clip into the board and then just slide out. Really is a, a cute little fan. I mean, for a one use server, you only have so much space, but uh, I don't know. It seems like, uh, it seems like a fan you could put it in your pocket, walk around with it. Nice little companion if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so like we said, one CPU, we've got a 4000 class uh, Intel Xeon in here. This one's blank. Plenty of DIMM slots. Sadly, we just have one populated, but for our benchmarking, we'll make a change and put a little more RAM in there. That's a 16 gig module. Now, one thing that is interesting is that there's a full RAID card in here. So that's a nice benefit for man managing the drives. Just gives you a little bit more in terms of capabilities. We can see our one power supply back here, the blank for the other. And we've got two PCIe slots available here. This one closest to me is a by 16. This guy facing the other way is a half height by eight. Uh, so, you know, really there's not a ton going on here, but there's everything that for its target use case that you could need. And again, at a, at a price point of, you know, around a thousand bucks, it's, um, it's got quite a bit of engineering and ILO 5, which is the big step up in Gen 10. So you're getting all the manageability, you're getting uh, ProLiant components. And then of course, if you want, you can get the HPE support to go with it. We're gonna put the lid back on, actually maybe add a little more RAM, then put the lid back on, probably take these hard drives out and replace them with, uh, I don't know, we've got some SATA Hynix uh, SE 4000 series that might play nicely in here. Anyway, we're gonna get it spruced up a little bit, run some performance tests, and we'll be back with a full review on storagereview.com in a week or two. Thanks for tuning in.